thought was good. Oh, this new nightclub in LA called Sunset. Um, they read about. I think this person was one of the owners of Studio Fifty Four, which is pretty cool. Um, LA was weird like that. Let me just. LA was weird like that. I think when I went. Um, obviously, there's a lot of those kind of one oak places. I think LA was good for dive bars. There's some really good dive bars in LA. If you go to there, like, definitely check out the dive bars, right? I remember that. Right, obviously, the famous like Rainbow Bar Cafe one where all the rockers go and stuff. That was nice. But just in general, there's loads of quite cool little holes in the walls. But I guess the problem with LA, much like London, is that everything closes at two. So, and obviously, because everything's so sparse, because, because it's such a sparsely populated area, you have to make sure you either jump in an Uber, which are fairly cheap, don't get me wrong, or someone drives. But it wasn't the best place to club hop. You have to kind of decide where you want to go. And then if you hang out there, you might be lucky and be, you know, part of a lock-in. Or you might have to just hope that someone invites you back to their crib. But um, the clubbing scene was a bit sterile. Again, like I said, most of the club, the couple of clubs I did go to were just playing like, you know, billboard hits and shit. And then on the other end, you've got, you know, the kind of rainbow bar cafes where you might bump into, you know, porn stars and people in bands and shit. Um, which again and it gets a particular kind of music so you have to be really into that sort of vibe but this is an article from Mix Mag it says Studio 54 co-founder New Club Sunset is bringing the spirit of 60s back to the LA um, so it so says here yeah, there are not a lot of cars and people on the street on a famed sunset strip in Los Angeles on a Friday evening the movement that catches the eye is a blip of the digital billboards that line both sides a boulevard the historic venues of the strip are now signing up sh- and operational the Whiskey Go-Go the Roxy the Rainbow which I mentioned the Viper Room I went there too and the former Gazari Gaz- now Wanuk but its newest spot is a strip um, it's pulling all the traffic it's Ian Scrager's Sunset obviously definitely check out um, the Studio 54 documentary um, it's one of the best clubbing kind of a history nightlife documentaries i've watched in a while um they really do a good job of kind of charting all the ups and downs of 354 telling you some of the mistakes that were made and i think it serves a really good um uh what do they call it what's that term they call it it serves as a really good cautionary tale for anyone opening up a bar or a club i think everything that 354 went through in the 60s is something that you we would have seen happen already nowadays or it's going to happen in the future it's the same issues happening again and again and again and i like the idea that they kind of spoke about you know maybe 254 was a victim of success the moment they started you know the moment they invented quote-unquote popularized the velvet rope was basically when its downfall started right people were getting um, really angry really pissed off that they went on the other side it turned into a celebrity hangout space which then didn't really serve the purpose of it being inclusive the owners got a bit up their own ass it just really went into kind of um self-sabotage mode but definitely if you want to open a bar or club definitely check out the documentary i recommend it it's really really interesting anyway this article continues it says set in the basement of a newly built edition hotel in west hollywood at the end of a sunset strip sunset door is tucked in conspicuously on the unmarked side of the building i always love clubs like that where you don't know where it is there's no signage or anything that's always the best thing isn't it you open the door head downstairs somewhere and it turns into another you go into another world sort of like walking into a portal um two queens Sorry, I'm at two queens. Two queues of glamorous revelers and line the pavement from the ropes to at the door all the way to the main boulevard. All plunging neckline, skyline, heels, their glitz record the clubs. That sh- uh, that Scrager co founded in the 1970s, New York, the legendary and impossible to get into 254. Um, half a century after the game's heyday to John was heyday so my eyes are horrible. Los Angeles is finally getting an East Coast style disco. What the city did have. On the other side of the strip at the Whiskey in 1964 was live acts whose breaks were filled with records played by female no-go go-go dancers. So Sunset was in common with the phenomenon of the celebrity sprinkled kinds also to Lenny Kravitz and Jeanette Monet. However, Sunset will open its floodgates to so similar establishments open to remain to be seen, although the venue of the strip has historically copied each and other form of success. Cool. The strip is, is a kind of universal name in it, mostly. All bars and clubs tend to occupy some sort of strip, some sort of high street, where everyone seems to congregate on the weekend. Um, obviously, more often than not, what ends up happening, popping space opens up, it gets all the attention, the other club competes, then there's some sort of like, you know, skullduggery happening, people snitching, accusing people of having drugs, or fights break out, and then one or two, one or more of those places close, and it never is the same. There's not many strips I know of, I can think of, that are still 
popping up as they used to in the past, as they used to. It's not really the same anymore. Everything kind of changed in terms of shit, unfortunately. Or people just grow up and get over it. I don't know, but it's a shame that there's not like a, a place that still exists, like where from I know, the top of the road to the end of the road is just fucking non stop fun times. Um, anyway, it continues. The intention here was to pay tribute to the Sunset Strip and bring back the spirit of the 60s and 70s, says Zen Freeman, one of the LA DJs whose strong understanding of the programming and proliferation of connections has locked him in as Scrager's nightlife partner at the West Hollywood Edition. It's the same door process as 54. We invite guests who we want to attract diverse, colorful people. It's meant to be a safe haven for LGBT community as well as for girls to feel free and safe to have a dance. That is really important, and especially in LA, that clientele, um, you really have to look after. And I think they do a good job of it, which is probably why places like One Oak are not the, you know, I'm not very, I'm not very, I wouldn't say they're held in high regard when it comes to, you know, regular dudes probably have a hard time getting into One Oak if you're not on, you know, if you don't have a nice little young thing on your arm. But I do think they do a good job of making sure that kind of girl feels comfortable. It's quite hard to do, I'd imagine. Um, of course, people give places like Bergen a bad, you know, a bad rep for how they go on, but it's a lot easier to basically pick a door for a gay club in the middle of Berlin, right? Because by and large, you can definitely spot, like, if you've been there enough times, you would, you'd be like, be in the queue in Berlin, Bergen enough times, you can, you can usually guess who's gonna get in or not, right? Based on what they look like, because you know, there's generally kind of a stereotypical. Um, techno sort of look that you can see who kind of fits the vibe and who doesn't but I'd imagine doing a door for like a regular you know club on a sunset strip or you know on fucking you know Shoreditch High Street or whatever it may be must be really difficult like how do you discern who's going to be right fit or not just because this guy looks like a douche and he has an own neck t-shirt on doesn't mean he's going to be one right he might be completely safe in it but you have to really kind of roll the dice and take a punt and hope that you don't invite some you know loser and it's going to make creep everyone out and you know stop people from buying drinks effectively so this must be really really difficult i don't really um i'm not envious of that position at all man but it continues this article it says here through a private whatsapp group friends of sunset are alerted to what's on the bill each week they receive a message on monday morning with lineups for thursday friday and saturday the only nights the club is open they are received pee in droves concoct an outfit worthy of experience and prepare to queue great much like the atmosphere outside studio 54 there's a palpable sense of panic emanating from the line outside sunset after all the club has a capacity of 250 people okay that's 255 that's a really good size i think if i did open up a bar club which i really want to i'll, def I'll definitely try and have it around the 150 to basically 300 mark which basically puts it in the realm of like a cocktail pubby sort of vibe I think that's perfect. Obviously, have most of the area people can sit down and have a drink, and then have a particular designated square where people can have a dance. I think that's basically the best place because I think when you give out too much room on the floor space to just people dancing and it's not full, it's going to look really empty. But when you have loads of seats and people can just sit in twos and threes and fours, it makes the club look a little bit more fuller than what it actually is. And when it gets a bit naughty and people start playing some, you know, some groovy tunes later on the night, you can then have people kind of congregate towards one end of the place where you can have a dance and not feel like if you sit at the bar that you're kind of, you know, sometimes when you go to places where if you sit at a bar, you sort of feel like you have to go and dance because you're exposed, right? Um, but sometimes those kind of cocktail bars are the best place because usually the dance floor is like on the other end. So you can, you know, slip off over there if you want, slip back in again. I think that's usually a good place to go. And I guess for LA too, if you're going to offer an alternative to one again, it's two fifty five cap, and it's a private WhatsApp group, which already increases the FOMO ness of it, right? And it's an exclusive place. You have to queue up anywhere to get in. It's definitely going to be full every night. So it's like a really, really clever tactic, um, while still maintaining, you know, the creative ideal behind it. It's a little bit corny, but I still like how they're doing it. Um, so there. Continues. Da -da -da. Those have been hearing so much like the atmosphere at 54, there's a purple sense of panic and make a line after all the clubs. Those who have been hearing distance of the suited security and glamorous list commanders play their cases, explaining who they know and why they should be let in. Actors from Netflix shows shoulder their way into the shoulder way to the stanchions, trying not to look desperate and fairly miserably. Yeah, that's always a bad look in it. That's one of the things I don't miss about members clubs or club night. Club nights at members clubs or hotels and stuff where there's a very strict list and it's more geared towards, you know, people that are move the movers and shakers of any given city, the people that are on those kind of like cultural, you know, icons of the whatever. The people that are featured in that W magazine, all those sort of wanky people, right? 
those parties are the worst because obviously no one has fun and dances everyone's just too busy going to the toilet and getting high and not having a good time and then usually there's a real strict person at the door someone that doesn't take any shit somebody that's used to like you know saying no to Brad Pitt and shit so when I kind of rock up trying to plead my case they're like you know fuck off you little shit they don't, they don't listen to me whatsoever so having to put you in a position where you're having to beg another man to get into a place to drink alcohol it's just not the vibe, especially for me, you know. I think if you're in there to make connections or you want to hook up with a certain girl or whatever, fair. You have to do what you have to do. But I think if you just want to have a good time and dance, there's so many other places you can go to. You can literally put on a pair of headphones and walk into a spoon and you still have probably a lot more fun than you were doing there. But, um, yeah, I think if you're all going to play that game, you definitely have to make sure you have somebody on the inside. There's no fucking around. Or what you do do, which I think was people don't do enough, is that you should just be a man of your word and if you say to your friend oh i'll get them on the list i want to get in a particular time help them out and just get there early i think that's what's helped me out if you are going to get a friend to put in a list try and make their life hard easier by just getting there early not being fucked you know turning up with a couple of people i don't know something along those kind of lines would be good spend some money at the bar maybe buy them a drink too just you know make it all cool anyway continues here there's no cover what's a cover mean cover is like the table or is that door entry um and you don't need a white horse to gain entry the currency's attitude and style the staff may be impeccably friendly and polite but they aspire to the same inherent sense who let in and who will never have a hope to get in guest list notwithstanding as a topic as it's too easy for so yeah really cool article i really want to rip your whole thing i recommend you check it out um it's a bit long but i like the i, I like the vibe i think if you've been there you know that it's a bit rare for them to have a place like this so it's definitely a cool thing for LA in general so let's see what that looks like post-covid but so far so good